Okay, in this lecture, we're going to cover the first part of the section 4.3 material on separable equations. Uh, so let's start by defining a separable differential equation. So a separable differential equation is a first order differential equation that can be expressed in the form dy dx is equal to the product of some function that depends only on x and a function that depends only on y. So a differential equation is, uh, again, an equation that involves the derivative of an unknown function. And our goal is to find the function y that satisfies this differential equation. That's what we would call a solution of this differential equation. So a separable differential equation is a particular type of first order equation where the derivative of our unknown function, dy dx, can be expressed as the product of a function of x and a function of y. Now the terminology that we're using here, separable, means uh, uh, or is referring to the fact that the right hand side can be separated into a function of x and a function of y. So we can separate the variables x and y. Now, in order to solve a separable differential equation, we will begin by separating the variables and then integrating on both sides. So for example, if we have something of the form dy dx is equal to f of x times g of y. So if we have the general form of a separable differential equation, we could rewrite this equation in the differential form uh, dy over g of y is equal to f of x dx. So what we've done here is we've grouped everything involving the variable y on one side of our equation and everything involving the variable x on the other side of our equation. And we want to try to solve this equation for y. Now, in order to do that, we need to eliminate the differentials uh, dx and dy that appear on both sides of our equation, which we can do by integrating both sides. So on the left-hand side, we would have the integral of 1 over g of y dy is equal to the integral of f of x dx. And let's say that uh, we're able to find an antiderivative for each of these functions. So say on the left-hand side of our equation, the antiderivative of 1 over g of y is given by some function, I'll call it capital G of y, uh, plus some constant, c1. And that's equal to the antiderivative of f of x, I'm going to denote as capital F of x, plus some other constant, c2. Now, from here, I could group all of my constants together and say capital G of Y is equal to capital F of X plus C2 minus C1. But now if C1 and C2, these constants of integration that I've added on each side of my equation are arbitrary constants, well, the difference of two arbitrary constants is just some new arbitrary constant. The difference in two random numbers is just a new random number. So rather than write C2 minus C1, since this is just some arbitrary constant anyways, let's just write it as a single constant, C. So what we would try to do from here is express this solution in what is called explicit form. So the equation that I have in the following form gives me a relationship between x and y. So this would define the solution of our equation implicitly. 
but if possible, I'd like to try to solve for y. I want the function y that satisfies this differential equation. So here, if the function capital G is invertible, then to solve for y, I would be looking at g inverse of f of x plus my constant. Now, it's not always possible to solve for y, for instance, if the function g is not invertible or if its inverse is not known, then we might not be able to solve for y. So I mentioned here, if possible, we would express this solution in explicit form. Uh, however, in some cases, the solution can only be defined implicitly, that is by some relation between x and y where we aren't able to solve for y. So in summary here, a separable differential equation can be solved by separating the variables x and y, uh, or whatever two variables we're working with, and then integrating both sides. And one thing that I'll stress uh, as we're moving through this section, as we saw uh, when we were talking about the general case, is that we can always group our constants of integration, C1 and C2, together on one side of the equation as a single arbitrary constant, C. So as I'm uh, working through the problems in this section and in this chapter, I won't write the constants C1 and C2 separately and then group them. Uh, rather, I will just write a single constant of integration on one side of my equation. So let's look at some examples <coughs> of solving the separable differential equations, uh, and then we'll talk about some applications. So in this first problem, we're asked to solve the differential equation dy dx is equal to 6x squared divided by 2y plus cosine y. Now this is a separable equation because this right-hand side can be written as 6x squared times 1 over 2y plus cosine y. That is, uh, dy dx is the product of a function of x times a function of only y. So in order to solve this equation, I would separate the variables x and y. So if I were to separate my variables on the left-hand side of my equation, if I group all of the y terms, well, I would have a 2y plus cosine y times the dy. And if I were to take the equation that we had and multiply both sides through by dx, I would have 6x squared dx. So notice now that everything involving y is on the left-hand side with the differential of y, and everything involving x is on the right-hand side with the differential dx. So to eliminate those differentials, dy and dx, I would integrate on both sides. And on the left-hand side, our antiderivative would be y squared plus sine y. And that is equal to, um, an antiderivative on the right-hand side would be 2x cubed plus c. So here, rather than writing a constant of integration on both sides and then grouping them together, I'm just going to write a single constant of integration on one side of my equation. And now, if possible, I'd like to try to solve for y explicitly. Now, looking at this equation, we have something of the form y squared plus sine of y is a function of x, and we don't know how to solve explicitly for y here. There's no easy way to isolate y by itself. Um, so, if we cannot solve explicitly for y, we would leave our equation in this implicit form. So, here we have what's called an implicit solution. 
that is a solution where we were not able to solve for y. So let's look at some other examples. Uh, in our next example, we're asked to solve each differential equation, and we'll look at a few parts. In part A, we have the equation dy dx is x squared times y. So it is separable, and our first step in solving a separable equation would be to separate the variables x and y. So if I divide both sides of my equation by y, and multiply both sides of this equation by dx, I would have dy over y is equal to x squared dx. So we've separated our x and y variables uh, with their respective differentials. And to eliminate the differentials dy and dx, we will integrate on both sides. So on the left-hand side, the antiderivative of 1 over y dy is the natural log of absolute value y, and that is equal to our antiderivative on the right-hand side would be 1 third x cubed plus c. So I'm going to group all my constants of integration just on this right-hand side. Now from here, I'd like to try to solve for y explicitly. And in this case, we can solve for y. So let's think about how we would do this. So first off, to get rid of the natural logarithm, I would exponentiate on both sides using a base e exponential. And I would have the absolute value of y is equal to e raised to the one third x cubed power, uh, or pl uh, plus c power, and I can simplify this a little bit by making use of properties of exponentials. So something that we'll do uh, fairly frequently in this chapter uh, would be to simplify the right-hand side in the following way. So this e to the x cubed over 3 plus c power, I can rewrite as e to the x cubed over 3 times e to the c power. Because recall, if we are adding, uh, or excuse me, if we are multiplying two exponentials that have the same base e, we could combine those as a single exponential function where the exponent is the sum of the exponents from those two factors, e to the x cubed plus c. We're just making use of that fact in reverse here. Now, if I rewrite this, I could think about this first as the product of e to the c and then times e to the x cubed over 3 power. And this term that I have out in front, e to the c, well, since c is an arbitrary constant, e raised to some arbitrary constant power would give me a new arbitrary constant. So instead of writing this as e to the c, let's write it only as c times e to the x cubed over 3. Because e raised to an arbitrary constant power is just some new arbitrary constant, so let's just call it c. Now, in order to get rid of the absolute value around our variable y, well, if the absolute value of some quantity is known, that means that the quantity we were taking the absolute value of, y, is equal to either positive or negative of this known quantity. So we could have y as either positive c plus, uh, or excuse me, positive c times e to the x cubed over 3, or negative c times e to the x cubed over 3. Now again, since c is an arbitrary constant, it doesn't matter whether I have a positive number or a negative number out in front of it. That is the sign um, of an arbitrary, or, or uh, whether I have a positive arbitrary constant or negative arbitrary constant, it's still just some arbitrary constant. 
So I don't need to explicitly write the plus or minus C because whether I have a positive or negative constant, it's still just an arbitrary number. So we would have Y is of the form some constant times E to the X cubed over three power. So this would be my solution of this differential equation. And since I've managed to solve explicitly for Y in terms of X, we would call this an explicit solution. as opposed to an implicit solution uh, where we have an equation uh, relating x and y implicitly if we weren't able to solve for y. So let's look at some other ones. In part b, we have dy dx is equal to e to the 2x plus y, which is a separable equation if we make use of the same property of exponentials that we saw in part a. So if I have e to the 2x plus y, I can rewrite that as e to the 2x times e to the y. And now we can see that this is separable. I have a function of x times a function of y. So in order to solve this differential equation, I would separate my variables. So if I divide both sides of the equation by e to the y, and multiply both sides by dx, I would have dy over e to the y is equal to e to the 2x dx. And now to get rid of the differentials on both sides, I could integrate on both sides. So on the left-hand side, I'm looking at the integral of 1 over e to the y. So I might rewrite this as e to the negative y power, and that's equal to the integral of e to the 2x. So my antiderivative on the left-hand side would be negative e to the negative y. That's equal to the antiderivative on this right-hand side, which would be 1 half e to the 2x plus c. I'm going to group the constants of integration on both sides of the equation just as a single constant on the right-hand side. And from here, I want to try to solve for y explicitly. Um, and I think we can in this example. So let's see how we could try to solve for y. Um, if I first multiply both sides of my equation by a negative 1, I would have e to the negative y is equal to negative 1 half e to the 2x power plus c. Now you might ask, why not minus c? Well, it doesn't matter. c is an arbitrary constant. So whether I'm adding an arbitrary number to this exponential or subtracting an arbitrary number, it doesn't matter. It still just have some constant. So you could use either c or negative c, whatever you prefer there. Now, in order to uh, solve for y, we could then um, take a logarithm of both sides, a natural logarithm, and we would have negative y is equal to the natural log of this minus 1 half e to the 2x plus c. And then to get y, I could multiply both sides by a negative 1, and I would have y is the negative natural log of negative 1 half e to the 2x plus c. So here I've managed to solve for y. So this is, again, what we would call an explicit solution. instead of an implicit solution. So let's consider some other examples. In part C, we have y prime is equal to the natural log of x over xy uh, plus xy cubed. 
So here our notation is just a little bit different from the previous example. Instead of using the Leibniz notation for derivative, we're using uh, the prime notation, y prime for the derivative. So if we were to first rewrite this using the Leibniz notation, we would have the derivative of y with respect to x or dy dx is equal to the natural log of x over xy plus xy cubed. Now at first glance it may not appear that this is separable, uh, but let's see if we can uh, rewrite the right hand side as the product of a function of x and a function of y. So from the denominator of this right hand side, I see that I could factor out an x and I would be left with y plus y cubed. Or I can rewrite this entire expression as the natural log of x over x times 1 over y plus y cubed. So I've now rewritten this equation in the usual form for a separable equation. dy dx is the product of a function of x only and a function of y only. <clears throat> so in order to solve, I would separate my variables. Uh, so multiplying both sides by y plus y cubed, I would have y plus y cubed dy. And multiplying both sides by dx, I would have the natural log of x over x dx. And in order to uh, eliminate the differentials dy and dx, I would integrate on both sides. So the left-hand side is pretty easy to integrate. We would have a 1 half y squared plus 1 fourth y to the fourth, and that would be equal to, well, let's think about the antiderivative on this right-hand side. To integrate log x uh, over x, we could make use of a u substitution. So a little scratch work here for this integral on the right-hand side. If we choose u to be log x, then du would be 1 over x dx. And so, rewriting the integral on the left-hand side of our equation, in term, uh, the right-hand side of our equation, in terms of u, uh, we have the integral of the natural log of u, which was, um, our natural log x, which was u, and then the dx divided by x, well, that's exactly what we were calling du. So we're left with the integral of u du. Now evaluating that, we have a 1 half y squared plus 1 fourth y to the fourth is equal to 1 half of u squared, where u was the natural log of x, and then we can add some arbitrary constant, c, uh, to both sides, or to uh, one side, um, since we can group all of our constants of integration on one side of the equation. So here, we could try to solve for y, uh, but we see that this left-hand side of the equation involves a fourth-degree polynomial in terms of y. Uh, in general, it's very difficult to uh, solve explicitly a fourth-degree polynomial. Um, so we will leave our solution in this implicit form. Uh, now, one thing that I could do to simplify my answer just a little bit is to get rid of these fractional coefficients. So I notice, like, my coefficient of y squared is 1 half. My coefficient for y to the fourth was 1 fourth. I have a coefficient of 1 half uh, for log x squared on this right-hand side. So if I'd rather have whole numbers or integers instead of these fractional coefficients, I could multiply both sides of my equation by 
uh, the greatest common uh, factor or, or least common multiple of these um, um, fractions. So in this case, multiplying through by 4, I would have 2y squared plus y to the fourth is equal to 2 times the natural log of x squared plus c. Now again, you might ask, well, why not 4c? Uh, well, if c is an arbitrary constant, then 4 times c is just a new arbitrary constant. So we don't have to write it as 4c. We can just call it a new value c. And this would be my solution of this differential equation, uh, where I have not explicitly solved for y. So this would be another example of an implicit solution. Okay. So in this next one, part D, we have the equation uh, dx dt is equal to 1 plus t minus x minus tx. So here x is a function of t, maybe depending on time, uh, and we're supposed to solve this. Um, so let's see if we can first show that this is indeed separable. Um, now on the right-hand side of our equation, we have a term 1 plus t, and then my second two terms, minus x minus t times x. Well, I notice that I could factor out an x from those second two terms, and I would have something of the form 1 plus t, Minus, if I factor out an x from those last two terms, I would be left with a 1 plus t. So factoring out the negative x from those last two terms, I'm left with a 1 plus t. So if I think about my first two terms uh, as being grouped together, 1 plus t, and then minus x times 1 plus t, I see that I could factor a 1 plus t from each term, and I would be left with a 1 minus x. And so now our derivative, dx dt, is the product of a function of t only and a function of x only. So this is a separable equation. And in order to solve, I will uh, separate my variables x and t and integrate both sides. So in this example, we would have dx over 1 minus x is equal to 1 plus t dt. And to eliminate the differentials dx and dt, I would integrate on both sides. And on the left-hand side, we would have the negative natural log of the absolute value of 1 minus x. Now, where did this negative out in front of the logarithm come from? Well, it comes from the fact that our denominator was a linear function uh, whose slope was negative 1. Uh, so recall from the section 1.5 material on substitution, uh, there were several integrals that I asked you to memorize, and one of them was an integral of the form uh, 1 over ax plus b. Uh, which would have an antiderivative of 1 over a times the natural log of ax plus b. In this case, the slope of our linear function in the denominator is negative 1, uh, which is why we have the constant of negative 1 in front of this logarithm. Uh, what we're really doing there is making a substitution where u is chosen as our denominator. Now on this right-hand side, we have an antiderivative of t plus 1 half t squared. And then grouping all of my constants of integration on the right-hand side, I would have a single constant c uh, for this right side. And from here, I'd like to try to solve for x explicitly in terms of t. So I might first begin by multiplying both sides by a negative 1 to get rid of the negative in front of the natural logarithm. So I would have the natural log of absolute value 1 minus x 
is negative t minus 1 half t squared uh, plus c, because the negative of an arbitrary constant is just a new arbitrary constant, so I don't have to write minus c. I could just write it as plus a new arbitrary constant if I like. And to get rid of the natural logarithm, I could exponentiate both sides using a base e exponential. So I would have the absolute value of 1 minus x is equal to e to the negative t minus t squared over 2 plus c power. And as we did in our earlier example in this lecture, we can make use of properties of exponentials to rewrite this e to the plus c power as a new constant, let's just call it c, uh, times e raised to the negative t minus t squared over 2 power. And to get rid of the absolute value around the 1 minus x, well, I would take the positive or negative of c times e to the negative uh, t minus t squared over 2. But whether I have a positive or negative value for c, it's still just some new arbitrary constant. c times e to the negative t minus t squared over 2. So solving for x, I would have x as a function of t uh, would be given by 1 minus c e to the negative t minus t squared over 2 power. Make sure this negative in front of my t appears uh, as a negative. Um, or if you prefer, again, uh, since c is an arbitrary constant anyways, instead of writing 1 minus some arbitrary constant multiple of this exponential, another equivalent form would be 1 plus c times e to the negative t minus t squared over 2 power. So we have the following solution where we've solved for x in terms of t explicitly. So this is an explicit solution. 